Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. This video is going to cover what jungler you should play if you find yourself in the jungle role and just don't normally mean it. For this guide, I'm covering champions that are good when behind or very uh, impactful to a game with minimal knowledge. I'm not going to orientate this towards actual mechanically easy champions as I feel this misses the point on the topic I'm about to mention. It's not about mechanics, it's not about a hard or easy kit, it's about how useful a kit is regardless of who's playing it. Simplicity generally correlates with this but it's not a direct factor. I'm going to assume you have basic mechanics for this guide. The, the champions I'm about to mention will generally be strong even when played with the most basic of understanding of the role and will remain useful even if they get behind to very behind which gives you a lot of leeway if you don't mean the role. I'll cover each champion and the actual reasons why they're so strong not just giving you a mindless list and then of course after that I'm going to explain what champions are bad and again the reasons. So let's get into this. Amumu. Naturally his kit is generally good at all points in the game whether being behind or ahead. He has a Q stun which can be used to pick and just generally lock down people. An AoE root ultimate with a, even of a score of minus 10 he can use to utilise it to lock down the entire enemy team. His W percentage damage only gets stronger and stronger and it, do, it makes him do insane damage and he doesn't have to build anything offensively when it comes to itemization, and he still gets this free damage. In addition if an enemy gets ahead they're going to start building very tanky, this just gives him more damage overall and he doesn't have to go offensive to get it so it's fine. He can just worry about stacking into tank stats which generally is just going to make you useful anyway. His E gives him some free tanky stats, not much but it's free so we can take it. Amumi is a tank jungler so he has to just keep on getting tankier and tankier and tankier and doesn't have to worry about offense. Some junglers have to get offense then defense and that can put them in a bad position because a lot of builds are quite expensive. Amumi can just build pure tanks so even if you don't play the role and you're doing poorly just building pure defensive items will mean you're very useful and will survive. Overall, his kit can also be used to disengage with his ultimate and you can get away with your Q over certain jungle camps. Overall, if he stays in the front line, gets a bandage off and ultimates at least three people and survives for a couple of seconds using his W and E on people, that's, this is him being useful. A movie is very easy to pull off, even from, wet, from being very far behind. Even if they focus you down, you burn off all of your abilities, you're still being useful to a degree or a tank at the end of the day. You can do this from being behind, even minus 5, minus 10 scores I've seen Amumu's changing the game. Maokai. The tree is in possession of some very tanky base stats, so from the get go this guy is naturally tanky with his uh, champion stats overall so means he can get behind a little bit. His kit is also extremely powerful at all points in the game when behind or ahead. His passive will just scale very well, he will spam his abilities and get his HP percentage back. This gives him plenty of more theoretic HP so getting behind a health item for example isn't so bad assuming you're using your passive to get your HP back. I mean technically speaking at max level it gives you at least 7% more HP if you just proc it once. So during a fight if you heal once you have 7% more HP. Meaning you get 7% more free stats, tank stats I'm referring to. So it means you can get behind a tank item overall and it's kind of forgiving. His Q, W and E can be used to engage, lock down, peel and generally just disrupt team fights heavily and again, you don't have to get any AP, you don't have to get any items, it just does this for you. From behind he still does these things. Maokai's ultimate is also awesome in this regard, it provides himself and his team with 20% damage reduction. This is insanely powerful in helping you and your team from behind heavily. If you think about it, right, overall, one proc of his passive and his ultimate can give him a theoretic 27% more HP for free assuming he dies just before his ultimate procs off. 27% more for free. It means he can be down an item, he doesn't have to get as tanky as fast. So if you're bad at jungler and you mess up a little bit, you can be down an item and his ultimate and passive will make up for it. Add in the protection CC he provides including the fact his W does HP percentage damage which again just scales without him without even getting any offensive items. This makes Maokai a very strong pick. In addition he can disengage very well which when behind is kind of important. Nautilus. Nautilus has extremely high base stats again. From here this guy's kit is literally overloaded with the sheer amount of usefulness it can have. His passive can be used to lock down multiple enemies in a fight. His Q a major pick tool, peel tool at all points in the game. His W gives him a shield that is based off his maximum HP, giving him a ton of free HP stats, allowing him to get an item behind and still be as tanky theoretically, with a free 17% of his max HP on the shield, which is huge by the way. His E Riptide can also be used to AoE slow an entire enemy team, either offensively or defensively. 
Finally, his ultimate can give him insane catch potential, lockdown potential, enemy backline potential, disruption. Overall, his kit is so insanely good. Even if you go in, queue someone, use all of your kit, your ultimate, knock up the backline, use your doubly shield for the free stats, meaning you can get behind an item. You're just useful. You're just useful. Like, even if you die after this, that's fine. You've still done your job, you know? It's insane. Uh, this can be used, his ultimate can be used to cut an enemy team in half. His kit can be used to disengage and generally get him and his, and his team away if he gets behind even again. And overall, he can do this when being heavily behind. Again, I just want to emphasize this. Like, all of these tank junglers are all the same. They all, when behind, still do stuff. They still are so useful because their base kit is overloaded. An abundance of CC and free tank uh, stats allows this guy to be useful with nearly any score. Sijuani. Her passive gives her free bonus armor to make her naturally a little bit more tanky. Free stats always allow a champion to get behind a tiny bit. Her kit can be used to lock down an enemy and keep them there. Even from when behind, she can use her Q lockdown, her W for insane percentage HP damage with skills without any items, and actually if your enemy is ahead it does more. Her E can be used to even further push, peel, lock down, and finally we've got the ultimate which can be used to engage, disengage if you're behind and uh, find a bad fight, um, lock down, peel, make picks. I mean, her kit overall is just so useful. The pick potential all of her kit provides and the massive lockdown can be used at all points. So if you're minus 4 or 5 on Sejuani, you're still going to do well. You've still got overall free tank stats, you've got CC lockdown, percentage damage with skills even from a bad place. Overall, even even from when behind, if you use your ultimate and pick off the AD carry, that's it, you've won the team fight. From you still being useful because of your kit. Zack. He has a free passive during team fights to allow him to be focused, giving him more free tank time. So what I mean by that is, when he jumps in and if you're behind and you get killed, the blobs are going to have to focus them as well. Um, and when they're focusing them, they're focusing you, the tank, and not the backline. So it gives him a lot more time. It's, it's very disruptive, basically. This passive also gives him blobs, giving him massive HP and munch during team fights. If you add in some spell vamp, uh, health regain of any kind, uh, mainly spirit visage, this can be an insane amount. His Q does a decent slow, and his E can be used to lock down and engage an enemy or disengage if he gets bad. Zack's ultimate is also awesome to generally CC the entire enemy team and be massively disrupting. His W is amazing as it does percentage HP damage on a very low cooldown. Much like the rest of the list, this gives him good damage when being behind or ahead. Lastly, he can disengage with a lot of his kit or even just get away. All of this he can do from when behind. Gragas, maybe one of the best champions when behind right now. His passive gives him crap ton of free HP stats when low. This means if you use around 8 abilities during a full team fight, which is actually quite a low number, he can generate hundreds of free HP Increasing his theoretic health. In this, uh, this get-go gives him a lot of free tank stats. His Q is also a good disruption tool and it's ranged, meaning he doesn't have to go in. And it could just generally uh, lock down a lot of people as well. His W gives him 20% damage reduction. This basically gives him 20% more uh, HP while this is on, making him naturally have free tank stats. Which again, if you get free tank stats, you get you can stay in the game for a little bit longer. So if the enemy has an extra like um, uh, giant spell, for example, your 20% damage reduction equivalents to that so you can keep up in items approximately speaking if that isn't enough the W also does percentage HP damage which again skills very heavily and actually gives him burst damage on tanks he has his E to get away peel lock down engage disrupt generally his ultimate is an insane engage disengage tool you can use this from when being behind you can use it to peel you can use it to lock down you can use it to make picks you can be you can make executions if used correctly this can be used at range as well allowing him to play safe and wait for his enemy to make a mistake overall in my opinion, he is one of the best champions in the game right now from being behind, assuming he plays okay. The free tank stats on his passive and W means he can be behind multiple items. His kit overall is just extremely powerful with percentage damage, and the amount of sheer disruption he can provide as a tank on a relatively low cooldown, and his ultimate which can pretty much save almost anyone or engage a team fight and split quite heavily, which is very important right now, it makes him just so useful at any point in the game. Even from being minus 5, he can still be relevant to some degree. This is another reason why he's so banned. Chugath. 
His passive gives him a decent sustain for most of the game, his range Q can be used to disengage, engage, disrupt or even catch an enemy backliner. This ability is extremely useful at all points and again, you don't need damage in it. His W silence is an insane disruption tool, a good AoE silence can destroy the enemy team's chance of doing well during a teamfight, assuming he gets even a half decent feral scream off. As he also does decent damage and helps him clear. Most importantly, his ultimate provides him with insane burst damage, which also does true damage. This scales very well. In addition, uh, from behind, he can use it to farm up his feast stacks, giving him a crap ton of free HP, which helps him not get behind too much. Because of your ultimate free HP, if you get behind an item, you can just feast up a lot in the jungle, farm it up a little bit, get six stacks, and you're gonna have a free couple of hundred HP, allowing you to keep in the game to some sort of relevance. Um, in addition, he has a lot of good burst damage and his Q and W without any items are still very disruptive oriented. You have to remember he's a tank anyway. He has burst and disruption with all of his kit, free tank stats and even a very powerful execute if you can get close enough. All of these advantages come with a kit that don't need any items at all really to skill. Uh, this one, I do want to mention, does slightly fall off a little bit more than the others, but his disruption more than makes up for it in my personal opinion. Okay, that's the end of the champions. I just want to mention a couple of things. All of these champions can also gank at level 4 and do exceedingly well. Um, and I also want to mention another thing. I want to mention the reason why tanks are better from being behind. Tanks provide base utility. They only have to work on tank stats and not spread their, uh, their offensive and defensive stats. Basically, if you have someone like a Wukong, he's going to go damage, right? And what happens if the, your team don't have a tank? He's got to rush tank stats. So he's only, always going to be falling behind trying to juggle offense and defense. That's very difficult. Uh, hybrid kits generally aren't that gold efficient, especially on tank and then offense. So generally, a person who focuses on one is uh, quite useful. A tank is always useful. It's always useful. And you only have to itemize just towards being tanky. The reason why I mentioned only tanks is because they provide so much. Their kit is just naturally useful from when behind and they're just a they're just a wall they're just a hp armor wall that's all they are and if you build up enough tank stats you're still going to be useful to the team do decent disruption on chugath get decent tank stats just go pure tank you're still going to be useful even if you don't play jungle and you don't make many ganks and you just farm late game and mid game you're still going to be useful even if you don't know how to gank on them you don't get any successful ganks which is quite common and somebody doesn't mean jungle or even play it that much you're still going to be useful that's the core thing i wanted to emphasize in this guide it's about usefulness but depending on how bad you do and of course with these champions they're strong as well you can get ahead it's just uh, generally speaking they're going to be useful at all points in the game and i advise them very heavily Okay, now you have examples of junglers that should be avoided and they are shown below, but this is not all of them, they're just good examples. For this section I'm going to cover tiers of junglers and not to play rather than mentioning each one and why they are bad. The three main tiers are Early Gank Junglers. These junglers require heavy, heavy skill and understanding start game and you cannot mess up. If they mess up their early ganks they will fall off heavily and not be able to do anything for much the rest of the game. If you do not mean this role, do not take this early risk as you will not have the skill to pull it off as much as a jungle main would without that amount of practice and experience. This type of champion won't scale without kills so be careful. Basically, um, a good example would be Lee Sin or any other sort of assassin jungler. If Lee Sin doesn't get a kill like late game, he only has his kick for utility and a slow. I mean, compared to someone like a Sejuani with an AoE lockdown, ultimate percentage damage, Q, disengage, re-engage, he's got nothing, right? He has to do an insect kick, basically, and that's very hard to pull off. So he's just a slick game unless he can assassinate someone and do well. So basically, early gank junglers, try and avoid them. Bad clear junglers. Junglers with garbage clears like Evelyn or Wukong should be avoided. This is kind of obvious. You don't want that early pressure of not being able to barely clear in a role that you don't play too much. Stick to champions that can clear to an okay extent upwards. An example of course is Evelyn, Kha'Zix, even Wukong. Quite poor clears overall. Assassin junglers. These are basically early gank junglers slash bad clear junglers in my opinion. Um, they don't pick up, they just don't pick up that Kazix jungle who's a weak clear and relies, yes relies on that early kill. If he doesn't get an early kill he'll have trouble clearing. If he has trouble clearing he's gonna have a goal deficit, an experience deficit. He needs early kills or he gets screwed over. If he doesn't get it, if he doesn't get a kill and he can't assassinate someone, what do they provide? 
one slow, one range slow, and a melee slow which you can't get close enough to use. He has to all in and assassinate or he'll die. Assassins have a bad clear and rely on early kills to snowball. If they don't get it before level 8 or so, it's basically over. They farm the jungle in the but they basically the farm in the jungle is not enough for a greedy assassin jungler in terms of gold. Like they need a lot more. Basically, just don't play these guys. They're high risk, high reward, and if you're playing a role that you're not comfortable with, just stick to the static, nice little rewards on a tank jungler. An example of an assassin jungler would be Kha'Zix or Zed. Niche picks. Just don't pick up niche champions in the jungle, please. I've seen people like, I don't play much jungle, I'm, I'm gonna try Karma jungle. Karma jungle's okay, but you don't know how it works and you don't mean the jungle, so you're gonna just do it lacklusterly and it's not gonna work. Basically, if you don't see many people using it, they don't, if something's niche, it's niche for a reason. If it was really heavily effective and ridiculously strong, it would become meta. That's how the game works. Basically, just uh, try and avoid niche picks, guys. Seriously, I see people doing this all the time. They try to go off meta, and it's just like... Off meta doesn't even make sense linguistically. It's most effective tactics available. You're not using the most effective tactics available on purpose. And I, I don't understand that logic, but... Um, yeah, just basically guys, try and avoid the niche picks. Um, if you don't understand how it works and what you're meant to do with it, don't play it basically. Go for the safe uh, clears, the safe junglers, tanks basically. Uh, an example of a niche pick would be Riven or Alistair jungle. I mean, th they have their uses, but they're very hard to pull off. And that's near it guys, I just wanted to mention that every single champion is viable of course, this guide is only covering the safe ones, I'm not putting the rest of the junglers down, they've all got their point, they've all got their uses, they've all got their tips, they've all got their their niche roles in certain circumstances, And but most of them do require some level of knowledge on a role, and if you don't have this level of knowledge, you don't play much jungle, just stick to champions that are good and useful at all points in the game, don't go for the risky players I see everyone picks up Lee Sin and that champion like he requires finesse he requires early pressure he requires you to land every skill shot he has to time everything perfectly I mean he's not the hardest champion in the world to play but if he falls behind it's game over if you're not confident on the roll and you're not confident of getting early kills don't pick it up just don't do it pick up something safe that will help your team no matter what happens that's what you should aim for especially if you don't mean the roll and that's it for the end of the guide, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, like it, dislike it, dislike it. If you like me and think the video is really useful, you can subscribe. And if it's not up to standards and it's completely garbage and you hate it, you can unsubscribe. I'm totally fair. Besides that, guys, have an absolutely great day. And as always, best of luck in the rift.